This unit examines the Coriolis term that was introduced during our transform from inertial to rotating frames of reference. The Coriolis term is named for Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis, a 19th century French scientist who was interested in the transformation of energy between inertial and rotating systems. Following on from before, the rate of change of a velocity vector in an inertial frame of reference is equal to the rate of change of that velocity vector in a rotating frame of reference plus the Coriolis and centripetal terms. Substituting this into the Navier-Stokes momentum equation gives us this familiar expression with these two additional terms. For geophysical applications, it is convenient to express the centripetal term as a potential in radial distance from the axis of rotation, allowing us to combine it with the gravitational potential to form this geopotential term, which can be incorporated into the Navier-Stokes equation. The Coriolis term, 2 omega cross u, is the focus of our investigation here. To understand the Coriolis term, it is helpful to consider it with respect to the local rotating coordinate frame on Earth's surface. Here is Earth as viewed from Himawari 8, a geostationary satellite looking at Australia. Earth is rotating about an axis of rotation, omega. The equatorial plane passes through the centre of Earth, splitting it in two, separating the northern and southern hemispheres, and the latitude at a given point can be represented by the angle theta from the equatorial plane through the Earth's center. On Earth's surface, the local coordinate system has the x direction running east-west, the y direction running north-south, and the z direction running locally vertical, perpendicular to the surface. Consider the rotation vector omega at some latitude theta. In the local coordinates, components of the rotation vector omega are sine with latitude in the vertical and cosine with latitude in the north-south direction. As the rotation vector is orthogonal to the east-west direction, there is no east-west component to omega. We wish to cross the local rotation vector with the local fluid velocity u, v, w, but let's first apply some quick scaling. The vertical velocity of the geophysical flows are much smaller than the horizontal velocities and can be ignored. Also, the magnitude of the cross term is at most omega times the local velocity. Omega for Earth is 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5, and the local geophysical velocities might be around 1 meter per second, which gives the vertical component of omega cross u as being negligible compared to gravity, and thus we can ignore it. So with these scalings, 2 omega cross u approximates to negative 2 omega v sine theta in the x, 2 omega u sine theta in the y, and zero in the z. Typically, this is written as a negative fv in the x, fu in the y, where f equals two omega sine theta, and it's referred to as the Coriolis parameter. What is interesting to note here is that the east-west component of the Coriolis term depends on the north-south velocity. Likewise, the north-south component depends on the east-west velocity. Also, the Coriolis term is a function of the sine of latitude, meaning it changes sine across the equator. As we will soon see, this leads to atmospheric storms, ocean gyres, and many other flows rotating in opposite directions for the northern and southern hemispheres. So at this stage, we have just transformed the Navier-Stokes momentum equation into a rotating frame of reference, introducing these Coriolis and centripetal terms, and then rephrased this equation for geophysical applications, giving us the Navier-Stokes equation for flow on a rotating planet.